Hello, and welcome to Arcadia University's BI 327 Histology course lecture series on the urinary system. In the first lecture, we're going to take a look at the general function and organization of the urinary system. As with all of these um, different lecture series uh, on the different topics of histology, uh, take a look at the objectives that are posted on the website uh, to get an idea what are the important concepts associated uh, with the topic. Um, and you can also use these as uh, study focusing questions. Now if we take a look at the urinary system, um, take a look at the organs associated with it, uh, the primary organ is going to be the kidney, and the kidney is going to be a paired organ. Uh, they're going to be located retroperitoneally, so they're going to be located essentially at the posterior wall of the abdominal cavity, and uh, they're going to be kind of a kidney bean shaped uh, structure and about 10 centimeters in length. And as we're going to see over this series of lectures, the urinary system and the kidney primarily uh, is going to be very important for uh, filtering materials out of the blood. And you can get an idea about the, the importance of this function uh, if you take a look at two kind of trivia type things associated with it. But again, it emphasizes the importance of the kidneys. The kidneys are roughly about 1% of the body mass. And so relatively small organ in relationship to the rest of the body. But if you take a look at where they're situated, where the, the renal arteries are coming off of the, uh, uh, the uh, aorta, uh, the abdominal aorta, uh, these structures, about 1% of the body mass, are going to be receiving about 20% of the blood flow. And so a very disproportionate amount of blood is going to be flowing through the kidneys. And that again emphasizes the importance of the kidneys as a blood filtering unit uh, within the body. In addition to uh, the, the kidneys, we're going to have the urinary tract. And basically the urinary tract it is going to take the materials that have been filtered out of the kidney, that have been processed uh, in many ways to produce urea, and essentially drain them from the kidneys, store them temporarily, and then remove them or void them from the body. And so the urinary tract is going to be composed of the ureters, which in essence are going to be involved with draining the, the, the kidneys. So they're going to be collecting the urine, uh, transporting it into the urinary bladder, urinary bladder is going to be a distensible or essentially a, a structure that is able to expand as it fills uh, and so it's going to be temporarily storing uh, the urine and then it's going to have a muscular wall associated with it so that you can constrict this urinary bladder, constrict this distensible organ uh, and essentially compress it down and squeeze out the urine from this temporary storage location. When that's occurring, urine is going to be flowing through the urethra and essentially voided or removed from the body. Now if we take a look at the general functions associated with the urinary system, as we said, the primary function is going to be involved with filtering blood. And so we're going to be taking uh, small molecules, metabolic waste, the foreign substances that are in the blood, and essentially remove them, uh, keeping them at a low enough concentration so they're not going to build up to be uh, harmful or disease-causing agents within the body. And so you want to keep maintain a balance uh, that's appropriate uh, by removing these waste products. The second function, again, kind of related to filtering the blood, is that it's going to regulate the ion, the salt, and the water concentrations of the fluids in the body. Again, keep in mind, as we've described this previously within the course, we know that the cardiovascular system is transporting fluids throughout the body. And within the fluids are going to be a, a wide range of things. Uh, we focused on oxygen, we focused on nutrients, but we're also going to be carrying different ions, as sodium, potassium, chloride. Um, we're going to be carrying water itself. And there's going to be a flow of those ions and a flow of the water between the lymphatic, the interstitial fluids, and the cardiovascular system vessels. And so materials that accumulate in the periphery or waste are going to get into the bloodstream and they're going to be filtered out uh, within the kidneys. The ions are going to be regulated within the bloodstream, and by doing that, that's going to regulate the ion concentrations within the tissue fluids within the body. Additional functions associated with the urinary system are going to be things like the production of renin and erythropoietin. Renin is a factor in regulation of blood pressure, and erythropoietin is going to be a factor in control of red blood cell formation. And so again, kind of related to uh, this function of regulating what's occurring 
within uh, the cardiovascular or the blood system. Now, if we focus in on the kidney itself, what we're going to see is it's going to be an organ which is encapsulated with a dense connective tissue uh, capsule around the outside. If we look in at the internal structures, what we're going to see is that there's going to be a renal sinus, and this is, uh, if you remember, concave. This is a, a kind of uh, indented region. Medial concavity is the indented region uh, within the kidney. And this is going to be the region which contains the renal pelvis. And the renal pelvis, you can think about as almost being uh, an extension or a funnel at the end of the ureter. And so that's going to be the location where we're going to be collecting the urine that's pr produced within the kidneys and then draining it into uh, the ureter. This region is also going to be the location where we're going to have blood vessels entering and exiting as well as nerves uh, that are going to go through and innervate uh, regions within the kidney, uh, as well as adipose tissue within the region. Uh, the hilum is going to be a region that's anatomically describing the region of the renal sinuses and all the structures, all the contents within this region. If we take a look at this, the, the uh, kidney is going to be uh, organized into a cortex around the outside and an inner uh, medulla region. The cortex of the kidney is going to be underlying the capsule, and it's going to be a darker staining region. Uh, if you take a look at it, the structures, and we'll talk about these structures in much greater detail uh, over the next series of lectures, are going to include the renal corpuscles, which are going to be renal capillary beds involved with filtering the blood, proximal and distal convoluted tubules, and so essentially uh, tubules that are going to be draining uh, the renal corpuscle systems, uh, and processing uh, the materials as it's going through, modifying, changing uh, the concentration of ions and solutes that are within the fluid. Medullary rays, which are going to be straight tubules, which we'll talk about uh, later on in this course, as well as paratubular capillaries. Capillaries in addition to uh, the capillaries within the renal corpuscles, but capillaries that are going to be found around those proximal and distal convoluted tubules and involved with carrying materials either to the tubules or away from the tubules that have been processed by the cells lining the proximal and distal convoluted tubules. The medulla, the inner region of the kidney, is going to be a, a lighter staining region. <clears throat> and this is going to be found underlying the cortex and partly surrounding the renal sinus. And when we take a look at this, we're going to see many more uh, tubules and ducts. And so we're going to see essentially uh, epithelial line structures uh, as a, a series of tubes, in essence, within the medulla. We look at this at a gross anatomical level. Uh, we're going to have some medullary pyramids, which are larger structures. Uh, and you can think about these as pyramids with uh, the apex, which is going to be pointed down towards the renal sinus. Uh, it's the apex of the pyramid is going to be called the renal papillae. But essentially, that's going to be the drainage location for that region within the kidney. And it's going to dump the urine into the renal sinus. The base of the pyramid is basically going to be going up and contacting um, the junction between the medulla uh, and the cortex. The medullary rays that we talked about before are essentially going to be straight tubules. Uh, they're going to be collecting tubules and collecting ducts. And we'll talk about the function of these later on but they're going to be organized instead of convoluted or twisted, like the proximal and distal convoluted tubules. These are going to be straight tubules. And so they're going to look, uh, and the pointer on the histological slide to the right is pointing at uh, a medullary ray. Instead of the kind of twisted profile, lots of different orientations of the profiles of the tubes we're going to have throughout a major region of the cortex, the medullary rays are going to be straight tubules. And these are going to look very similar to what we'd see uh, within the medulla before. Uh, and so that's why they're called medullary rays, because they're essentially extending up into the cortex, but they look to be very similar in appearance to the medulla itself. Now, the medullary ray is going to be the center of what's referred to as a renal lobule. And so we talked about renal lobes in the previous slide as an extension of the pyramid. Uh, the renal lobules are going to be much smaller, and there are going to be many of these within a renal lobe. And what we're going to see is uh, the renal lobule is going to be those central medullary rays. They're going to be the collecting tubules and ducts. And then all of the uh, renal corpuscles, all of the uh, proximal and distal tubules that drain into that region. And so the medullary ray is going to be at the center. And then some of those twisted tubes and some of those larger, uh, you can see it, uh, these uh, renal corpuscles here, um, 
you know, like glomeruli uh, that we'll talk about in the next slide. All of these that drain into uh, a central medullary ray are going to be a portion of one of these renal lobules. Now again, if we take a look at this, uh, this is another way of, of looking at it. Uh, we're going to see a portion of the kidney, and so we've got the cortex around the outside. We've got the medulla kind of towards that inner region. Within the medulla, we're going to have straight uh, tubules and straight ducts emptying into the renal sinus, ultimately draining into uh, the ureter uh, over here. Uh, you can see this kind of pyramid-like structure, uh, so the base of the pyramid here, extending into the apex, which is going to dump into the renal sinus. And so again, this is an extension of those renal lobes. The renal lobules would be a much smaller extension, uh, like we've got up here uh, with the arrow, uh, which is going to extend down and then drain into and through uh, these straight tubes within the renal lobe. Again, the renal lobules, uh, taking a look at this uh, in higher magnification subdivisions of the renal lobe, they're going to consist of that central medullary ray, and so we're going to have these straight tubules that are running up and down through the center of the stream, and then all of the structures that drain into it. And we're going to define those structures in the next uh, lecture uh, portion, the next mini lecture, as a nephron. But it's basically going to be these uh, renal corpuscles, which are these clusters of capillaries surrounded by uh, uh, the uh, structures here, which we'll talk about in a minute. Uh, so we get the renal corpuscles, essentially Bowman's capsules, which will identify the proximal and convoluted tubules, all of which the drain into this central uh, medullary ray. At the edges of this, uh, we're going to have interlobular arteries and veins, which may be difficult to uh, identify. Uh, without specialized stains and special staining techniques, uh, but we recognize them there. Again, interlobular arteries and veins are going to be either carrying blood into the region where they're going to be filtered by these capillary beds that we're going to be talking about, or the veins draining uh, from that region. This is going to finish up our, our overview of the urinary system. Uh, in the next lectures, the next series of lectures, we're going to start looking at the filtering mechanism itself and the specific anatomical and physiological uh, characteristics of different regions uh, within the kidneys, the ureters, the urinary bladder, and the urethra. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to email me at hoffmanj at arcadia.edu. Thanks, and come back for part two of our urinary system lecture.